Okay, so our next speaker is uh, Professor Sang Peng Wu from Princeton. Thank you. So I really enjoyed all the wonderful talks, and my talk is about the experimental realization of uh, topological quantum effects in 2D crystals, which is um, a, a pretty much a continuous talk from uh, yesterday's talk uh, by um, Fong and uh, and Liang. Actually, they have um, the great they give a great introduction, and you know. <laughs> Have a prayer after their talk. Um, it's good. It's it's both good and uh, and difficult, uh, easy or difficult because since they already introduced so much, I only essentially only need to talk about the experiment and it's done. It's difficult, but uh, because um, I have more than one hour, so I still have to give introduction. So I, I do the following way. So I'm going to give an introduction, but my introduction will be oriented for experimentalist. Um, I will not give you rigorous any, uh, for example, uh, Leon give you a criteria uh, to determine what kind of material is topological insulator, is, what kind of material is chain insulator. I will try to use picture intuitions and uh, um, in order to convince you or, or, or uh, say something about without looking into the band structure. If you don't want to be serious, you can still tell something uh, from just crystals. So, so I would like my introduction will be oriented in the way that I would like to ask if we want to discover new 2D or monolayer topological insulators, what kind of material you want to look at? For example, I'll give you, I'll give you uh, three types of crystals. And uh, here, different colors means different atoms, and they have different types of crystal, crystal structures. So I will give you 30 seconds to look at them. And, and if you like to choose one, two, three, some of them to study. Uh, for discovering new topological insulators, which one you, you like to choose? Okay. Leon already tell you everything. Um, if you have a good answer, so you're comfortable about your choice, then you don't need to listen to my next few slides. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, please. <laughs> okay. So as I said, I'm going to give a. If you like? Do you, do you like to see more? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, some kind of hexagonal with different atoms, square, rectangle, more complicated patterns. But in, 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 to, in, in general, they are all very simple to the lattice with only one or two atoms, right? Okay. Now, my talk will be uh, the following way. So I will first intro basically just summarize what Liang and Feng has told us. Uh, in a way, I'm going to organize in my own way, uh, as my own understanding, and, and also try to convey to you that what's the uh, criteria or intuition to find to the topological insulators. And then I will uh, come back to the question I asked. So what kind of 2D crystals are possible? Not definite, it's just the possible TIs. Um, and then I'll give you an example. It's, that's the experimental study. Uh, which Liang has advertised. Uh, I'm going to talk about monolayer tungsten ditellarite, which we picked a few years ago, and uh, and so we find that it's a 2D TI uh, at high temperature even. Also, we made a, a discovery in this same material, which is a, a superconductivity, and and at the end a little bit summary. Okay. So uh, introduction, summarizing what Liang and and uh, uh, Feng has told us. So it's a really remarkable uh, idea or a very deep insight happened um, uh, in 1982 uh, by TKNN. Remember, it's only two years after the discovery of the, the integer quantum point effect. It's uh, the insight about the deep connection between the quantized Hall conductance and the battery curvature. So, so they realized that if you want to have this kind of effect, the magnetic field may be not essential. What's essential is the battery curvature. And you can calculate a, bar a, a chain number, which is topological number, from the battery curvature. Uh, uh, and then you can determine the quantized uh, Hall conductance, which is what we learned from uh, yesterday's talk. Now, now we, I, Neon has given you the exact uh, formula for battery curvature. I don't need that. I only need to tell you the following. So first, the chain number is the integer, integral of the battery curvature over the momentum space for the occupied bands. Okay, what's really essential is the battery curvature. Now the battery curvature, you also 
just need to know the two uh, uh, sentences here. So first is the well-defined quantity for a given band. Um, and if we know the block band, energy dispersion, and the wave functions, you can determine the omega, the barrier curvatures. The second is what's the physical meaning of the barrier curvature. So barrier curvature omega is in the momentum space as a function of k. You can start this as a counterpart of the magnetic field in real space. That means it's, a, it's a effectively, a, you can think as a effective magnetic moment. That's it. And then, somehow. And then what this remarkable paper tells us is that if you want to look for new types of topological state, means, for example, if you want to look at quantum Hall effect at zero field, now you don't need, really need to focus on the magnetic field, you just focus on the barrier curvature. So in, in a given band, in, in a normal crystals, you have, you have a block band, you can just focus on that. What you really need to do is to do barrier curvature engineering. So you just find a special kind of barrier curvatures, and then you, 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 you want to realize a non-zero chain numbers, that's it. Um, so the key idea is to do barrier coverage engineering. Of course, the theoretical proposals early days is based on the graphing. And, and this is very important because I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, how to choose new type of 2D crystals for realizing topological insulators. And graphing is a topological insulator. That means we just want to look for new graphing. And, and you already uh, heard and also know perhaps a lot about these slides, but I'm still going to go through a few pieces because that's the thing we want to look at uh, in different 2D crystals. So in graphing, the, the low energy band structure is very simple. It's just described by two, by two matrix Hamiltonian uh, where you have the diagonal term zero. You see here it's only sigma x and sigma y is no sigma z. That's because of the uh, equivalence uh, or energy equivalence between the two sub lattices. Okay, and then you have the uh, off diagonal term which is described, described the hopping between the two sides. And this off diagonal term has it's just a kx plus iky, but it has a value label here. It means you have two drag cones. You have, you have um, uh, one k, k value drag cones. You have tau equal to one, this term, and the other one is just negative one. So they have value indices. Uh, so you have value degeneracy and spin degeneracy because in the system we have both time remote symmetry and space invariant symmetry. So in this case, it describes a linear dispersion at the rock point, that's very important, and there's no band gap. So if you understand these slides, you can, choose, you can, you can pick up the crystals that I show you. Uh, now if I keep going, we want to do very curvature engineering, right? We want to look at very curvatures. Now in a system with time reversal symmetry, as I mentioned, the very curvature is seen as effectively magnetic moment. So on the time reversal, you will change the sign, right? The very curvature will change the sign. So you have this first equation, k becomes minus k, and omega becomes minus omega. Now, you have, if you have space invariant symmetry, that means k and minus k, the space inverse, and omega has to be same, because they are symmetric. This means that if you have both systems, like graphing, you, can, you will have barrier curvature everywhere at zero. Right? This is very simple. You just add them together, you get zero. But this is not true for the exact Dirac point. This is, this is a singular point here. And you can, you can know that because if we know battery phase, uh, if a electron move around a direct point, the battery phase is not zero, it's a pi. Right? So basically it means that the battery coverage at the direct point, the exact direct point, is a data function. And, and this is a, a easy to understand because in terms of the symmetry argument here, pi will equal to negative pi, pi also equals to pi. So that's fine. But it gives us a very good starting point, which is uh, that graphing direct point have a uh, barrier coverage singularity of the other function, and then you can start engineering barrier curvature from there. And one way, of course, uh, uh, to think about now you want topological insulator, right? So you want gap, you want insulator. You can introduce a gap, and you see what happens to the barrier curvature. Okay. Now the same symmetry argument. If you introduce a gap, for example, I introduce a sigma z term. It's m sigma z. Then the gap will open, of course. Now the, uh, uh, this sigma z means uh, the satellites will have different potential, different energy. That means the break, the invariant symmetry breaks. Okay. So in this case, invariant symmetry breaks. Uh, if you look at here, then th this term does not have to be true, but this time reversal symmetry term has to be true. 
This means you can have a very curvature at k and minus k different sign. They, they can have they will have to have the same magnitude but different sign. And this is allowed by symmetry. So this is basically you can see once you open the small gap, the boundary curvature will become a peak with a finite width instead of the delta function. You can think as delta function become broad. Okay, now I'm summarize slides of what Niang have told us. So you can not only have this kind of term, you can also have other kinds of terms to open the gap in the graphing. And once they open the gap, you have barrier curvature. And what kind of barrier, barrier curvature looks like is something we want to do, because we want to find a special kind of barrier curvature which will support topological insulating phase. Okay. So, so, so one more thing here is, is to think about uh, if I have a positive M for the sigma z term, so we call this, uh, let's call it the invariant symmetry breaking term, or I call it staggered uh, sub lattice term. Um, this M is positive, you will have barrier curvature looks like this. Let's say K value, value will have positive barrier curvature. But if you have negative M, of course everything is reversed, so you have negative, so the peak will be negative here and positive here. So we'll flip the peak. So that's the basic idea. Now if you look at the term introduced to this stagger term, introduced by how then the K and A, you can, you can understand what's the physics there now. So this one we already know, the stagger graphing a positive and negative on k and k minus k because the invariant symmetry is breaking. So k and minus k, they have different sign. Now if you look at the Haldane term, which is nothing but the same as the staggered graphing, but you have a tall d here. So tall d means you have k value of negative m uh, uh, minus m for the, uh, for, the, for the k prime value. So which means you will flip one of the sign for the barrier curvature, so you get both positive. And that's what you want, right? So, because the chain number is the integral of the barrier curvature over the Brownian zone. So you must get a non-zero chain number, and that's the quantum Hall effect. <coughs> if you further look at the K-Malay term, now it's, it's, instead of just have the M tall sigma at another degree of freedom, which is spin, because I mentioned in previous uh, slides, the graphing has a value degeneracy and a spin degeneracy, right? If you have a spin now for the for the Spin up, you have negative, for, the, for spin up, you have positive one for the SC. So you basically realize the Haldane graphing, then you have the red curve, red barrier curvature. And then if you have spin down, as SD is negative, you just have a blue curve. So this realize a two copy of Haldane model, and, and uh, essentially saying in Haldane model, you have an edge mode, chiral edge mode. In this case, you have spin up, spin down, travel along opposite direction, uh, which is helical edge mode. So the summary is that uh, once you open a trivial, this is a trivial because some, the integral of barrier curvature becomes zero, uh, uh, bar the, the breaking invariant symmetry term will give you interesting effect like a valley Hall effect. So these two values now uh, have different barrier curvature, different magnetic moment. Uh, there's also interesting uh, results in 2D semiconductors. Uh, based on this uh, uh, barrier curvature argument, you can also have value selective optical response as a, uh, uh, as a field of study there. Uh, so this one is a Chenery insulator, C not equal to zero, and this one is Z2 equals to one topological insulators. Okay, so this is a basic summary from uh, yesterday. Now we want to uh, talk about uh, what's the experimental status in graphing. Right, so graphing is so good, and experimental idea or, or theoretical idea is pretty uh, uh, mature. Now, how about experiments, right? So it turns out to be uh, is that uh, monolayer graphing is very difficult to open a gap. However, it can still open a gap. For example, using bond nitride, you can create more ray super lattice. That will give you a gap. And that gap is described by this MZ term, M sigma Z term. It's, it's a stagger graphing. So this has been realized. But Nobody knows how to introduce the Haldane term in graphing and the Kamen term. Uh, uh, what's, what's interesting, oh, I forgot to mention that if you look at this barrier curvature, so here you clearly see time reverse symmetry is breaking, right? So you have positive barrier curvature here and positive barrier curvature here. So it's all, so the Haldane term breaks time reverse symmetry, but the Kamen term breaks no symmetry. So they keep all the symmetry. Of graphing, and that's the first part of the Kamen term. So it, it's there, it's just uh, too small in graphing. So it's not experimentally realized. Um, 
However, there are, there are attempts in, in, in recent, especially in this year, right, 2019, very exciting developments, as we heard from uh, Feng Wang's talk, including uh, now bilayer twist, twist bilayer using a, a twist bilayer plus for nitride. You can uh, realize, realize the quantum anomalous Hall effect, and yeah, also the, the, the ABC uh, trilayer from the yesterday's talk. And, and well, now the question is whether this quantum anomalous Hall effect in this type of system uh, is because of, became, uh, because of the uh, Hall dam mechanism. Uh, but I think it's still uh, it's, uh, it's quite possible and it's very uh, exciting. Uh, for the K MLA graphing, so single layer graphing is too small. Uh, the term, the energy term is on the micro EV level. Bilayer graphing, there's attempt attempt from uh, uh, Andrew Young's group. Uh, they use, they want to introduce spin optical coupling, right? The term we describe it is a spin optical coupling, coupling term. Um, by integrate, by putting bilayer graphing on top of uh, a TMD materials where uh, you have uh, large spin optical coupling, okay? But this is not uh, uh, fully realized in the King Malay term yet. So what I want to talk about, what about other 2D crystals? Can we realize that these different kinds of uh, sort of topological states in, in, in other 2D crystals? So uh, it's a good reason to do that because we really have a large family of 2D crystals. Here I just show you some typical examples uh, in their bulk form. So it's a bulk graphite, a bulk molybdenum disulfide, and there's a lot more. So this plot, each dot is one bulk material. And its plot as function in the y-axis is, is the uh, binding energy between layers. So they, they are all layered materials. And, and if I have a higher binding energy, it means it's difficult to ex exfoliate. If a lower binding energy in blue, for example, they are easy to exfoliate. So essentially, you, you can have more than a thousand of 2D crystals that you can exfoliate easily. At, at least, this is a theoretical survey, so at least by the theory. <laughs> <laughs> and you have another, perhaps, uh, um, a few hundred or even close to a thousand uh, of a, a in the middle region, which is um, potentially exfoliable. And you have uh, a lot here too, but it's too difficult. Uh, this is only for the bulk, right? You can also uh, obtain 2D crystals from other ways. So this is only for the exfoliation. So you do have a lot of uh, uh, materials to play with, and can you find to the topological state beyond graphing? So what was the x-axis from that? Yeah, I always get this question. It's because you don't <laughs> want to overlap all the dots in the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see. <laughs> um, okay. Now you have two ways, right? You want to choose 2D crystals, which one to study. Um, the first way, for example, is easy way, just to ask Leon. And perhaps that's the most reliable way. However, Leon, I think, is quite busy. Uh, so you might better want to develop some intuitions uh, before you ask him, right? Propose something more reasonable. Uh, I list uh, a lot of predicted monolith quantum spin hole system. There are really a lot. and. Uh, this dot here represents much more than what I show here. Um, I'm not, in this slide, I'll go through it. Uh, in this slide, I'm not going to tell the details. I just want to show you they are a lot and the number is still growing. Okay, my introduction part is done. Uh, now you go back to the first question that I ask. Which one of this is potentially a 2D topological insulator? We already know this one is not because I told you uh, if, the, if you have a honeycomb lattice and then you introduce a sigma z term with a just a m, constant m, that means you break the invariant symmetry, that means you just uh, have the two sub lattice have different energy. This is exactly this way. So you have different atoms on the sub lattice, they are very different uh, in energy. So this means this, this is the sigma z term, which is a staggered graphing. This is realizing staggered graphing is too big. And it's not uh, uh, likely that you would like to study this one. What about other ones? Any pick? C. C. Nice. Have one try. Okay, I'll go through. Um, in order to make a choice, I want to emphasize one more thing, which perhaps we a little bit overlooked. Um, 
go through uh, all, our, all our discussions is that the, uh, the following. So if you read this slide again, so as, as I mentioned, this is the most important slide. So you have a drug, the keys have a drug point, right? So you have, you have this uh, linear dispersion described by this Hamiltonian. You have valley degeneracy, spin degeneracy. And, and what Kim Malin told us is the following. If you do have this kind of band structure, you don't need to do anything, right? This term is always there. So he gives you a term which is very exotic, give you a very exotic phenomenon like quantum spin Hall effect. But, so this is very important, uh, in, I think it's two aspects in, in King Mali's paper is, firstly, they propose you a term and, and then they tell you it's always there. So you actually don't worry this term as an experimentalist, right? They just, uh, what really worries drug point and what give you a drug point is the following. It's not, it's, it's, of course, you can easily find a system with time normal symmetry and special emer emergent symmetry. But what's really, uh, I think, uh, important here is the sub symmetry, often it's also called chiral symmetry. And then is that you, is the following, the honeycomb lattice graphing give you A and B sub lattice, they're different, right? So if you have A, for example, this one, it's different from this one by chirality, if you look at the, what's the, their neighborhood. So they're different, um, but, in this honeycomb analysis, they have the same number, right? You have one for, for each in a unit cell. And they have different energy because they exact identical atoms and identical uh, surrounding, except, except they might have a rotation. Okay, so NA equals to MB and EA equals e, EB. Now, this is a, honey, this is a very unique uh, uh, or very special property of the honeycomb analysis. If you go back to check what 2D crystal has been predicted as topological insulator, and you will find a large portion of them is based on honeycomb lattice. It's a special kind of lattice. Uh, for example, this is spider, it's very early ones, and later on it has city thing, germanium, and standing. They all some kind of honeycomb lattice or buckled honeycomb lattice. Okay. I'll give you one example, which is more recent prediction in 2018. I think it's an interesting one because uh, first, nature produced this crystal. So it's crystal, uh, I Googled this name uh, for pronunciation, and Google don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to pronounce it now by myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> I call it Jack Hilton Gate, okay. Um, so it's a, a naturally occurred layered mineral, so it just dig from Earth. And it dig from Earth in 2008, where the idea of topological insulator appears. So, <laughs> so, so, so Earth may also think about topological insulator. <laughs> and I give you a uh, 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 very surprising is that this 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 ins this material is a novel topological insulator, quantum spin Hall insulator, with a gap about 0.5 eV. So it's very big. Uh, and of course, nobody has studied this yet. And it's layered. What I'm showing you is a monolayer of this crystal, right? It has, it has three atoms, three types of atoms, and it's a honeycomb again. So you have the green atom is the mercury, is this one, Hg, forming a honeycomb lattice. And again, you go back to the Kim and Lee mechanism, right? You have honeycomb, you have AB sub lattice, you have time row symmetry, and you have the space invariant symmetry, you have drug point. And to be able to coupling, Kim and Lee told you, you don't need to do anything. To so be able to coupling will open the gap. Okay, so, so, so that's, that's the survey, simple survey in honeycomb lattice. Now think about, uh, can you make Ti from a square lattice? The first problem is that you don't have the sub lattice anymore. You only have one set of lattice, square lattice. So this atom is exactly identical with this atom. Of course, you can do something to this crystal uh, by making some distor distortion, right? You can, for example, distort it so that this is not the uh, exact planet anymore. It can have some up and down. Now, in this case, you do have chiral symmetry, satellite symmetry now, because this atom is different from this one. And because if you consider 3D, uh, the up and down. So in this case, you do have chiral subsymmetry. You do ex expect dark point as calculating this paper. This is this, this also 2018. Um, you do have dark point, right? You can have other kind of distortion, uh, which is Instead, uh, uh, with the up and down buckling, plus some shift towards some atom, uh, uh, one direction. So you do then have a stabilized, each of them are square lattice, but then you have this kind of sort of shift towards 
the other atoms. And this is uh, this type of device, this type of uh, uh, crystals describing, for example, monolayer telluride, tellurine. I can call it tellurine. And th th this also I have a direct point here, and you don't need to put anything band gap open here. So those are uh, all sort of predict topological insulators. Now go back to the question. Of course, you're going to choose C now. How about D? D has different kind of lattice, right? So you have different color, so different atoms. But so you have more, so Na is not equal to Mb, right? You have more uh, this yellow atoms than the then the I don't know, blue color in, the, in each unit cell. So Na is not equal to Mb. So that's not what we want. Because in graphing, it's Na equals to Mb and Ea equals to Eb. That's not what we want. But this is actually very interesting. In the binary lattice, if you have Na not equal to Mb, often implies that you have very strong correlation. And, and uh, I'm not going to talk about that. So this is an interesting lattice. But this lattice is actually is a 1T structure of TMD. And TMD is what we, what I was interested in, and I'm still interested. In. So, okay, now you have a lot of choice, right? And then, then, then what you're gonna do, right? That's not a theoretical question anymore. Of course, you can ask a very good theoretical question, like you have so many kinds of spin optical coupling term. Which one? Why you think Kimberly is a dominant term? But to that level, it's not important to experimentalist because the limiting factor is now which kind of material you can handle. And in most of the predicted Crystals is not stable. And if you apply the sub lattice symmetry to all the known or well studied to the crystals, you can already exclude, exclude most of them and you don't have much choice. So TMD, uh, uh, thanks to uh, Liang um, and, and the collaborators, the uh, predictions is very good um, in terms of the match to my interest. And, and now, if you look at the TMD material, it has three layered atoms in each in, in a monolayer. We call it monolayer, but actually it's three layer. Um, M atoms in the middle layer, and it is called trigonal prismatic coordinates for the M and X atoms, where you have one M atom, M atoms connect to six uh, X atoms in a different, so in this kind of way, it's called hexagonal, because if you look up and from top, you will see hexagonal lattice, where each of the um, yellow atoms here corresponding to, so those two overlaps, so up and down the same. That's why you get hexagonal. And this, of course, we know is the staggered graphing. It's not a topological graphing. And um, one T is, is that the same for the, for the units here, it's same as the one edge, but the bottom part usually rotate so that they do not overlap anymore. And you have this kind of structure. This is exactly what I described uh, in the previous slides. And, and there's one TMD that's stabilized in this 1T structure, uh, that's TAS2, and we know TAS2 is widely accepted as a multi insulator. Okay, and then many of the TMD in this 1T structure is not stable, they're gonna transfer, they're gonna distort. The same, the distort of hexagonal, I guess. And this is not what we want for topological insulator, right? But as I mentioned in square lattice, if you start from square lattice and make some distortion, you may have some chance. So once they distort, they become 1T prime, now you apply the principle that I just talked to you. Uh, you think this topological insulator or not, just by looking at the lattice. So you can, you can group. Now you, have, you just look at the, uh, the, the M atoms, just blue one. They just thought, right? They shift to each other. So you actually have two sets of lattice, which is, um, which is um, rectangle. Right? This is one set of atoms, lattice. And the other one set is this, this. So you have two sets. And if you look more carefully, this atoms here is connected to the six of the rings. So in, in that, we call, this is a hub, this is rings. You have a ring, a wheel of rings. Right? The wheel of rings sort of can have some distort, right? And then if you look at this atoms, the wheel of the rings go this way. So you have a chiral symmetry. And then the energy on this two, sub, two subset as a group should be same and have number the same again. So this tells you that it's very possible, right? And then you check the theory, check Nyang's paper, indeed. You have drug points. If you don't, don't think about 
spin up the coupling, you have drag points, as uh, Leonard told us, and then you don't need to do anything, spin up the coupling will open the gap. Okay, so it's naturally a topological insulator, and that's the prediction from this paper. And, and they also did a very careful analysis on the lattice structure, and they found that uh, WT2 is, no, they found that, um, well, the conclusion is that if we have stabilized lattice in one T prime or one T D, they're very similar. Um, uh, uh, TMD monolayers, and then plus gap opening, you will get quantum spin or insulator. Uh, in their calculation, they find first tungsten dielectric is the one stabilized at one T prime or, or one T D, but they find there's actually no. Uh, they have band gap opening here, but this this guy in the middle gap point is too high, so they block that band gap. So they predict a negative gap. As I mentioned, at this level, it's too small energy. You don't even trust the calculation. Uh, what you really determine is that what you can do. So I will talk about the experiment now. Um, but before that, there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting discoveries in this materials, tungsten dielectric, uh, recently starting from, uh, of course, uh, uh, from Ang's and Kawa's paper on the discovery of the non-saturating, extremely large magnetic resistance in this material and the prediction on the type 2 well same metals for the bulk. And then Molly, I will talk about this uh, quantum spin Hall effect, and we also discovered a superconductivity. And in the bilayer, there's also a very interesting uh, effect, nonlinear Hall effect, uh, Leon has told us, and also ferroelectric metal. So metal often um, is not ferroelectric, but this one is. So more is coming about that. So I'll talk about two parts from now on, some experiments. Two parts of um, experiment. First, the experimental observation, observation <coughs> of quantum spin Hall effect, and, and then the superconductivity. So I will give you a little bit more uh, introduction on the experimental side, right? It's, it's, it's the effect uh, we want to observe uh, this, this, this quantum spin Hall effect, and, and uh, you already know it's two copies of the Hauden uh, graphing, which means two copies of the quantum Hall effect. And the essential phenomena is that a bulk have insulin system, right, and then uh, uh, spin up and spin down will travel on the edge with opposite directions, and um, experimental realization was first done in uh, mercury telluride through a band inversion mechanism, a little bit different from the graphing. Uh, in 2007, in semiconductor head structures, it's not in 2D crystal, and and we already know the very famous experiment. Um, uh, and, and another system is the indium arsenide gallium antimony header structures, which give you a similar effect. Um, both of the semiconductors, there's only two semiconductor header structures. So it's a very rare effect, even though it's very famous. Um, they both, they both uh, appear, the effect appear at a very low temperature, have to use liquid helium to observe the effect. Okay, now I'll talk about uh, uh, our experiment. Before that, uh, what you expect to see experimentally in quantum transport if you do have a quantum spin Hall insulator. So of course, you, you, the, the, the system is described by insulator, as I mentioned, and the key is to observe the boundary state, the edge mode. And you can have this simple picture, right, that's just a, 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 a helical mode in the band, as I showed you earlier. So yeah, there are two um, aspects you want to demonstrate. The first is, uh, what's the, do, will you be able to observe the helical edge mode of the insulator? And then you want to check this helical edge mode is indeed, because symmetry is very important, is indeed protected by symmetry, especially the time row symmetry. And, and if I con convert these two aspects into the transport device measurements, you want to see uh, first the bulk is insulating edges conducting, that's a good sign. And then you want to demonstrate a very special value of the edge mode conductance, which is one e square over edge per edge. Now this is, this is important because uh, you have time reversal rever symmetry in your system, and you have a 1D edge mode, you will have spin up and spin down. That means you often expect a 2E square of edge per edge. But in this case of quantum spin Hall effect, for the one edge, if you drive current from source to drain, you only have one mode that's responsible for the current because the other mode can only travel backwards. So you only have 1E square of edge per edge, even for a time reversal symmetry symmetrical system. And that's a key number. Um, and then you want to demonstrate this is not an accident, right? You want to see in a ballistic regime, that's the case. So you want to reduce the length 
of the channel so that you enter into a ballistic regime and you demonstrate that's indeed uh, one e square over h. And for check the time of symmetry, of course, it's apply B field. So if you apply B field, you will see a time of symmetry breaking. So the quantization, I mean, the, 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 the conductance of the edge mode will destroy because there's no protection anymore. And if a lack your system have a drag point, which means the edge mode cross point here, and then apply B fields, we'll open the gap and, and you will see that gap. That's what you uh, look for. Okay, so this is a device uh, we made. It's a banner wall set structure, of course, you know that, and, and graphite as a gate, and then BN will protect the crystal, and, and you just made the contacts to the crystal. Okay, this is a side view and top view where you have uh, multiple probes designed to the measurement. And, and this is a data uh, where I show you a device made from trilayer, bilayer, and monolayer. And this is uh, one slide that's really showing the, the beauty of 2D crystals. Once you go from bulk to 2D, many things may be different, including um, um, optical, electrical, and uh, all kinds of uh, phenomena. So here, the bulk WT2 is a semi-metal, and a trilayer is also a semi-metal, as shown here. What I plot is a conductance, of, just four probe conductance of the 2D flake as a function of gate voltage uh, applied through the graphite, for example. And then you see the conductance does not change much, so your gate does not do much things. And then you reduce the temperature, you see the conductance increase. That means you have a metallic phase, semi-metal. And I agree with, with the calculation, I agree with the uh, bulk material. And then in a, a bilayer and monolayer, you see very different difference, very, very, very different uh, in the middle where you don't have, have gate voltage applied, zero gate, near zero gate, you see the opposite behavior. So that means you have insulating state at, um, at the uh, intrinsic, for the intrinsic amount and bilayer, which is different from the original calculations. Um, and outside this, this regime, you still have metallic. Okay, so this is a temperature dependent of the gate at the curve. And now the different thing happened in mile and bilayer as well. So the bilayer, this conductance go to zero. So you, you do have a insulating state, but the mile layer go to something and saturate. So this is something you want to demonstrate because you want to show that the entire flake is insulated, but you still have some edge modes, which are corresponding to uh, uh, the current transport, which can give you current transport. So, so the, the thing is that the number here, the saturate conductance plateau in this device is not uh, the number we want. I emphasize this number is very important and it's lower than the number and it could be due to many reasons. But the, I, the idea is that now we, we, we want to go into this material and check if it's indeed uh, topological insulator. Okay. So you want to demonstrate. So the, the first thing you want to demonstrate whether this is true, truly the edge mode so here's an example uh, of the experiments. I will give you a survey on that, uh, which is a uh, three contact. So this color is contact, and the background color is the WT2 uh, monolayer. And then you do the following experiment where you apply gate voltage from the left pin, and you collect current from the right, right? Because in this geometry, this, this middle one is float, uh, you, you collect current from both the bulk and the edge and then you observe the black curve. Okay, the black curve has a uh, plateau that I just showed you in last slide. So you have the residual conductive here. And then you ground the middle pin. You collect the same current from the left, sorry, from the right. And then you see the blue curve. Okay, at the blue curve now, you see the middle part drop to zero, exactly zero. And this clearly demonstrates that the why you have a plateau in the black is because of the edge. So you have edge mode uh, conductance. And this is an experiment that you can design to show that bulk is insulating but edge is conducting. And there's more experiment uh, from non-transport uh, 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 techniques, for example, in this paper, uh, the combined RPARS and STM that also demonstrate that uh, first band gap opens and also potential edge mode. Um, this is nice data showing uh, using MIM, uh, microwave impedance uh, microscope, which is just a, a tip that you scan 
right? And then you can see the, you can image the conductance, conduct, how well the conducts on each spot locally. And this is a nice image showing that uh, in the middle, it's insulated, no, no signal. But as on the edge, you have a conducting edge mode. So it's pretty uh, solid now in monolayer tungsten dielectric. This is established. Okay. Now the real thing we want to uh, uh, solve is about this: whether it's really quantized to the expectation for a helical edge mode, which is um, uh, sort of uh, um, the key signature for quantum spin hole effect. Right? And to do that, you have to overcome some difficulties. That's the reason why the previous device does not work. You want to have very good contact because you mirror a 1D wire, essentially, the edge mode, essentially, a 1D wire. How you can make good contact to this 1D system. And, and uh, how you can make your device with high quality, as high as possible, in order to see the intrinsic effect. And better, as I mentioned, you want to check the length dependence so that you know you are in the ballistic region. And in the ballistic region, you want to see the quantized conductance so you demonstrate it's not by accident. Okay, the device we, we made is the following. So still have graphite top gate, and then you have a BA encapsulate uh, uh, WT2, which is different from previous one because here then the context is embedded, so you have some up and down. In this case, it's very flat. So BN and two BNs very flat, and, and WT is in the middle. Contact now is only two sides, so you can mirror transport from left side to the right side. And you have a lot of local bottom gates, which I will explain why we need this. And, and in this case, you have very good high quality device because it's well protect. And uh, in experiment, we will do the following. So we first apply the gate voltage to the top graphite, and then you can dope the monolayer layer to very uh, high doping level, so it becomes metallic. And it's easy to mirror resistance for metallic crystals. And you just mirror the resistance from left to right, which gives you a resistance. Okay. And then you use one of the local gates to tune the voltage and deplete the carrier, the, the carrier in, the, in the selected area defined by a local gate. Then you ex expect to see the following. You ex expect to see the resistance rise because you have insulating in the middle. And then you don't rise much, very high because of edge mode. So, so this, is a, this is a step which mirrors the edge mode resistance, right? Because you have change of resistance is limited by the edge mode. And this way you can have a very good contact because essentially you are doing WT2 contact to the WT2, so dope to the edge mode, dope WT2 to the edge mode of WT2. So the same material, you can expect a good contact. And our experiment often uh, give you a contact resistance on the order of 100 ohms. Um, then you can also do less dependent stuff in the same material and same device because you can just choose uh, local gates differently. They have different widths. That's why we design this way. So you can study less dependent consistently. If it's a different device, it will be uh, maybe a different, uh, well, we'll messed up your experiment. And that's the idea. And this is the result. So 100 nanometer channel, the so local gate width, uh, 60 and 70, and you have two devices made. So the three curves, they look very similar in terms of their step height. So, so how sharp the step is, you often indicate how high quality in your monolayer. Um, but you can see even though they have different slope, but they all jump to the same height. So the step which mirrors the, the resistance of the edge mode is, is edge over 2e squared. Now remember you have two edge. And this means that for each single edge, you have one e squared of edge for the conductance for three different lengths. Okay, and that's what we see, what we want to we want to see, and also what we see. And, and of course, you can do lens dependent study. So the different color means uh, different device, and e each device will have different uh, dots because of different local gates. So you can see that if you increase the length of, of the channel, uh, the edge resistance increase, and eventually it will become ohmic, because if it's longer and longer, it's just uh, ohmic behavior. So, so just resistance will be linear to the L. But if you reduce the length to a very short situation that the electron will well, travel ballistically, you saturate, you never decrease below this level. And saturate is a number that we want edge over, 2 e square for 2 edge. And this is a, a, a good thing to, to have. So the next check is to uh, show 
that magnetic fields also do things uh, as you expected. So here I show you a blue curve is the uh, helical edge mode conductance, the edge conductance. So it's two e squared over h for two edge. Uh, as a function of gate, because you have plateau, you have gate range. And then you apply B field. So B field will kill the conductance everywhere, almost everywhere. And, and then there's one special point, is this one, which decrease and never saturate, but other spots decrease and saturate. Okay, so you can, why you have this uh, behavior? If you look at this point, negative 6.4, at the point, at the dip here, and you plot the conductance as a function of B field, and this is the exponential of decay, where it's a log scale. Uh, at the temperature here, it's a 1.8 Kelvin. You can also do the different temperature that give you the same exponential decay. And this curve, all this data here, here can be uh, replot and they collapse in the following way. You just plot B over T in the X axis and log conductance. So this means that all the data, data is described by the simple equation here. So conductance equals to this exponential term, that's the Zeeman term. So this means Zeeman gap opens with the effective G factor in this device about five. And we can explain this because you have edge mode. What we measure here is the edge mode, right? And then you tune a Fermi level by gate to somewhere. For example, if you heat on this peak, this dip here, you might heat on the drop point and apply B field to open the gap. So your electron will see the gap and give you rise to the uh, Zeeman effect. What about other parts, right? This part, is, if you think a drop point, how about the other parts? And that's also uh, can be explained because here you see the gap, but here you don't see the gap because the Fermi level now move away. If you move away of Fermi level, and, and, and in this case, the time you apply B field, so time row symmetry is, is breaking, so you don't have protection, so conductance still decrease, and then you see a saturate, you decrease and somehow saturate. Right, so that's that's the expected behavior for a helical edge mode. That's also very good. So combining all this evidence together, I think it's quite confident that all these criteria I listed previously is satisfied in monolayer tungsten ditellaride and is a quantum spin hot insulator. Uh, of course, you have you, you have to do more work, and and because first, just to you can never prove one hundred percent in physics, right? You should keep explore and then. And then uh, the reason it's to explore is that this quantum spin hot effect may, may allow you to give you even more exotic phenomena. So, so something else that we should also keep continuing, such as non-local transport, or, or uh, something I will describe later. Um, that's the um, demonstration of the 2D topological insulators, so which match what uh, I mentioned previously, right? the, 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 the how to find a 2D TI in monolayer crystals. And what's also surprising in this material is that uh, we observe the quantized conductance, the helical conductance, uh, as uh, up to a very high temperature, up to 100 Kelvin. And, and you can see the data here. They stay near the 2 e square of H until 100 Kelvin and it goes up. If it goes up, we think it's because the bulk become uh, activated. Okay, and, and this is consistent with the measurements on the bulk gap on the order of uh, tens of mini electron volts, and we're still doing more experiment to determine uh, the real uh, or more carefully about the gap. Okay, so this is the first part. Uh, a second part is they discovering the same material, uh, monolayer, tungsten dielectric, where we see superconductivity. Uh, what I show you here is the same plot I have shown you previously, just a gate dependent conductance, where we now know that this residual resistance here is. Is because of the edge mode, because of the helical state. And then you increase the gate, you will gap, you will go out of the gap and go to metallic phase, right? If you focus on the metallic phase, uh, this data is taken at 4 Kelvin. Focus on the metallic phase and go to even lower temperature, you see the following. You see the resistance drops and then goes to zero. And that's superconductivity. And, and you can easily check superconductivity. You don't need to do much step like quantum spin hall effect. Um, so you can check the IV characteristics at high temperature is ohmic behavior. At low temperature become not highly nonlinear and there's a range where you apply currents but you don't see any voltage. And then you have a jump where it means the current is too much, you kill the superconductivity. And that's what you expected. 
And, and in our device optimal situation for the superconducting TC is about is close to one Kelvin, a bit less than one Kelvin. Um, and this, okay, so, so if you, before I talk about data in the next slides, if you think about, it's very interesting because you do have an insulator. We, have, we already demonstrated it's an insulator, although it's topological insulator, but it's, the, it's still an insulator. <coughs> right? In the insulator case, you just apply a few gate voltages through bone nitride, you, you turn this material into superconductors. And now maybe you, you, now you get used to it because of graphing or something, twist graphing, right? It was surprising if you first time see it because uh, you don't expect this. So that's very um, unusual. And the data here is the resistance data as function of temperature and gate voltage. So here's highly doped, here's less doped, uh, close to the uh, charge neutrality. Then uh, you can see the, so the same data. I just plot them a different way. You can see that at highly doped range, the RT resistance function T shows the following. It just drops, goes to zero, and this is the superconductivity, and they apply gate voltage, they, they continue to change to an insulating state. Here's the, the topological insulating state. And you can estimate the carrier density in this device, it's pretty standard. Uh, it's close to, uh, at a critical voltage, this one, it's close to five times 10 to the 12. So if you add, at carrier density on the order of 10 to 12, you, you get superconductors. Um, so this is one strange thing about this superconductivity. There's some other strange things, which I will give you a summary. I'm not going to talk about the intrinsic mechanism or any more details of the, for example, symmetry of the superconducting state. But some hint says it's unusual and it was to uh, study more so the first uh, hint is the low density. The second hint is the following. So if you apply B field, you will cure the superconductivity, right? Uh, this is a vertical field for the blue dot. You can easily cure it. So below the poly limit. But for inclined field, you don't quite easy. So you can, the inclined field will go, the superconductivity will stay even if you apply a large inclined field way beyond the poly limit, about four, more than four times larger. I can see the trend here, how the change. This is the second hint, and the third hint is the following. So if you look at what I'm showing you, is gate dependent of the resistance function of B. Okay. So I show you, if you can tune the gate, and then the TC change, right? You can tune this from insulator to superconductor. So, so, so you basically continuously change the TC with gate. So gate has strong effects on TC, but this is five volt, this is one volt, almost super kindly, almost gone. And, and you see the BC, which you can define as half of the B, critical B, right, jump, the R as function of B. So BC is the middle part, it does not change much. Maybe you can even say it's going higher, but it's not changing much. So gates do not tune the BC. And same thing for out of playing field. So, so that's a on euro part of this superconductor as well. Um, of course, we, we want to study more on this material. Um, the last comment is to compare uh, the density of the superconductors. Uh, often, before this area, right, before the twist graphing, before monotonic nitride, often I, if I, someone asks you, you want to see a superconductors, Naomi, disenonide, or something else, you often expect 10 to the 14 for the carrier densities. But now it seems we, we move to a lower and lower end, and same as the general trend, which means that we will find more and more superconductors in, in 2D crystals that beyond our uh, general expectations. Um, this is a little bit summary of what I talked today. Quantum Smihal effect at in, in the intrinsic monolayer tellurite superconductors with doping. And on, what more general is, is this. So topological effect is a zero field realization of quantum Hall. Right? So, which often add high field and low density. And superconductivity often high density, but uh, zero field or close to zero field. But with this material, a good demonstration is that, you know, you can realize zero field quantum Hall effect, one arrow. You can realize a very low density superconductivity, there's another arrow. And same thing for twist body graphing, right? You can realize superconductivity at very low density, topological state here. So, I think this, 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 this domain where we think those two phases may separate very well, perhaps is 
no longer true after many years, we have discovered more and more uh, new kind of quantum materials. So once they merge, this is the area, I think it's a new territory that we can explore a lot. Um, and I look forward to that. So uh, two slides of summer. How much time do I have? Have like 15 minutes. Have still 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go slowly. Uh, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> you need two slides. <laughs> <clears throat> um, understand the more or less superconductivity. I already told you, right? Some very unusual things there, and and uh, um, so the intrinsic nature of the superconductivity is one aspect. The other one, the other aspect is to is, is connection to topology because it's a topological material, and then now you see superconductivity we can be topological superconductors, and there are some predictions uh, based on. Uh, um, after, after the, the discovery, there's some uh, theoretical predictions that say there may be high order topological superconductors. We have Mariana color states, for example. Um, but we want to see experimentally what happened, what will happen. And the other thing is, even though uh, this disregard whether the Malia superconductor itself is topological or not, you can always create uh, junctions, topological adjustment junctions are proposed by Liam. Uh, perhaps, perhaps this is a very good uh, platform to realize in such a uh, system where in this case you can have um, a gated geometry just like <clears throat> gated geometry just like I have shown you previously. Now you use a two side gate to dupe it so it becomes superconductor, but the middle part you undupe the system um, to support the quantum spinor edge. Now you can have a hope that this quantum spinor edge can be proximitized and you have helical superconducting state. And uh, that's the uh, proposed by Fu and King, uh, the famous proposal for, for realizing Mariana zero mode. Of course, that's, that's what I want to say. Um, the other thing I think is even, perhaps even, well, from the device side, it's very interesting because you have a system, now you can tune a superconducting state all the way to the insulin state, so you can define a lot of patterns within a single atomic plane where you, have, uh, you want superconductors and non superconductors. And in this case, you can do a lot of device engineering or to, to observe some confined, for example, isolated superconducting islands, what will happen if you add electrons onto that isolated island? Something like this you can imagine, and, and I, I think that's quite uh, exciting. So I'll give you uh, one slide on the hint of the realization of topological adjustment junctions. Uh, this is a device I just, in the previous slide, I showed you, uh, using a gate right, to, 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 to make a superconductor on two sides and insulating here. Now, what can happen? Right? You can see we in this is actually the I have three junctions, three this type of junctions in one device, and then you see the following. So, if you look at high bias currents, which means you kill the superconductivity, so everything normal state, and that's exactly what I showed you to mirror how to mirror the edge mode resistance. Right? I just expect to see a if you tune a local gate, you just see a resistance step, and that resistance step mirror the edge mode resistance in normal state. So normal state means the current, high current bias. So that's something here or here, the two sides. So you see resistance step goes up. So the color is the resistance. So low resistance, high resistance as a function of a selected local gate, which is the middle local gate. Okay, you see the resistance step. That means you do have a good quantum spin hall edge mode in the normal state. And then you now go to zero bias current, <coughs> Two side are superconducting. Okay. Now you, instead of normal state, helical normal state, you have superconductor, helical edge mode, superconductor in the middle. What you see here in this one, the jump, you still have a very big jump here. Right? That means, yeah, you have something, but uh, you perhaps even you still mirror some uh, resistance. Okay. And this also you have some jump step. You still mirror some resistance. This one, you don't have any jump anymore. This is very minor. This is, you don't have jump. That means in this material, in this junction, you don't have jump means you have superconductor, right? Even though you, you know from a normal state, you tune this to insulating, but in a superconducting state, you don't see any resistance change. So out one out of the three junctions, you have this one. The helical edge mode is proximatized. Those two are not, because they just still have a normal state resistance. 
So this is very good uh, evidence to say that we can realize superconducting helical edge mode. The next question is what about right, the, the exotic predictions? And, and I don't have that yet. OK. This is the last slide, sorry. So a uh, little bit of summary on, on, so we talk about, look for 2D topological <coughs> matter, topological quantum matters. Uh, we talked to the, the three different realization of <coughs> gap opening for drag cone, a stack graphing, Hodan graphing, and K-Mali graphing. And a lot of efforts are trying to realize them in graphing, right, single layer graphing using more rays. So you can, more, you can see more rays very helpful in this, in this situation. For the first two, but still, so far, I'm not sure about the K MLA mechanism. And then we go beyond graphing. So, one H model automatically realizes the staggered graphing. We realize the K MLA graphing in TMD, just I show you. But how about here? Uh, we don't know yet. So, this, this reason I think you can think about it this way. So, K MLA give us a very exact term, and they are very kind, so you don't need to do anything. But Hodan is not right. He, he tell you a very exact term, but well, I don't know what, how to do. Um, of course, you, you, you st should still expect more, especially with some motivation here, right? So something may still happen. But go beyond this three scenario, we should think more uh, ambitious, I guess, at least think about it. non uh, ions, fractional chain insulators, graphing or not graphing? Thank you. Thank you.